Hi guys, Good Curve here, with a new video on Unity Terrain. This time it's Terrain with a Twist. It's about creating a mesh-based terrain, not a regular Unity Terrain. What's so special about a mesh terrain? Let's take a look at that. A Unity Terrain uses a height map, which only has one elevation value for each XY coordinate. So anything fancy like overhanging cliffs or caves is simply not possible to create without adding mesh objects or tempering with special shaders. Once you start working with mesh terrains, it opens the door to a new realm of possibilities. Here are a few examples. You could do a small world map, non-rectangular shapes maps, or stacked maps. You're basically free from the limitations of a height map. There's a catch though. If you want to do a mesh terrain with nice splat maps and a high performance vegetation, you will need to have deep pockets. You will need to have a pro version of the terrain tools I've shown before in this channel. Megasplat and Vegetation Studio Pro support mesh terrains out of the box. Microsplat and the regular Vegetation Studio don't support meshes. I will also be using Terrain to Mesh to create a mesh from a regular Unity terrain and Blender to edit the mesh and create the cliff overhang. Ok, so let's get started. I've already created the terrain using Gaia, so the first step is to create a mesh version of it. The terrain to mesh tool is simple and effective. Drop the terrain on the source box, set the vertex count to 200 by 200 and generate. You can switch off the original terrain to show what the mesh looks like and it's close enough with the 200 vertex count for my taste. Next you can go to Blender and import the mesh obg file to edit it. I'm using the extrude tool to create the cliff that will serve as the example in this terrain. As you can see, I'm not a Blender expert, so don't expect any tutorial videos on Blender anytime soon. No need to worry though, there are tons of videos for this free tool. Once you're done editing, you can export the mesh as a Wavefront OBG file ready to be imported back into Unity. Make sure the mesh is read-write enabled, otherwise the Megasplat part will not work. Next up is Megasplat. Once you know what to do, it's actually not too difficult. But this part took me the longest time to figure out. It's all in the documentation, but scattered across the pages. And it's like following a breadcrumb trail. Not a clear tutorial on how to do it. But hey, from now on, you can just use this video instead. The first action I just did is to use the Megasplat mesh converter on the newly imported mesh. It creates a new mesh with an underscore splat suffix. It's key to use that mesh, otherwise you will see weird edges around the splat textures. Drag and drop this mesh into the scene. Next add the mega splat example mesh material to the mesh. Add the following mesh components to the mesh too. Mesh Collider, Megasplat Collision Info. And start painting with the Vertex Paint tool.
And now the vegetation. The documentation of Vegetation Studio Pro is better on this topic, but not yet perfect. However, a post in the Unity forum by the author is the missing puzzle piece. I will add it to the comments and once you've read this it's all easy if you're used to Vegetation Studio and used it before. Vegetation Studio also has a mesh terrain setup tool and it does all the legwork for you. After dropping the terrain on it and hitting the Create Mesh and Add Vegetation System button, you're ready to continue. Add Vegetation Studio Pro to the scene. Under Terrains click on Add All Mesh Terrains. Create a no texture biome. Edit the biome and add grass and trees. And here we go! The grass and trees are also added to the overhanging cliff. This is all for today, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please vote the video up if you did, and I'm off to create the next video.